Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Kitchen? She wouldn't, huh? You go look for yourself. <laughs> well? She ain't milking her goat. She ain't. <laughs> now, Granny, wait a minute. Hold on, Granny. She's done work that Harry ain't to do it. <laughs> Granny, I don't think Wampin's gonna do no good. I've been studying this problem a heap, and I think I got it figured out. I'm listening. Well, the only thing that's gonna get Ellie's mind off of critters is a nice-looking young fellow. I'm all for getting Ellie a fella. Maybe Mr. Drysdale can help. He's got some fine-looking young hands working down at his bank. Now you're talking. You get yourself a son-in-law that can keep his eyes on your money. I'll call Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> Report on Operation Boyfriend for Ellie Mae, Phase One. Data cards of all male employees were withdrawn from personnel file and fed into Bank's electronic computer. To select those are the characteristics of an ideal husband. With incredible speed and accuracy, all were rejected. What? Phase Two. Personal interviews conducted by yours truly proved more effective. Intensive interrogation, careful screening, and intuitive judgment have produced... Never mind all that. Jed Clampett is on his way down here to look over his prospective sons-in-law. Now, I want to look them over first. Where are they? He is waiting in my office. He? One man you found? Only one whose qualifications make him worthy of the hand of Ellie May Clampett. Trustworthy, loyal... Helpful, friendly. I'll bring him in. He'll be an old man before I get to meet him. <laughs> Mr. Fred Penrod of the accounting department. Mr. Milburn Drysdale, president of the Commerce Bank and your esteemed employer. My boy, I've been looking forward to shaking your hand. I have great things in mind for you. Why, just last week, I was saying to my board of directors, Keep your eyes on that up-and-coming young man, Rod Pentridge. Fred Penrod. Exactly. I've been watching you ever since you started to work here. Well, I, I just started this morning, sir. Exactly. <laughs> and already your work is so outstanding, I have you earmarked for promotion. Well, well, to be very honest with you, sir, I haven't done any work yet. Exactly. <laughs> and it's that very honesty that has brought you to my attention. Now, I'd like you to come to my house tonight for dinner and bring your wife. Mr. Drysdale. Mm -hmm. Uh, he isn't married. <laughs> Not married? Too bad. <laughs> well, there goes your vice presidency, my boy. <laughs> vice presidency? Oh, yes, but I could only trust a married man with that kind of responsibility. Are you... Are you by any chance engaged? Uh, no, sir. You have a girlfriend? Uh, no, sir. I, I just moved out here from Kansas City. Oh, what a golden opportunity you're losing. Hey, Miss Hathaway. <laughs> right you are, Chief. We've got to get this young man married. He does need a wife. Somewhere there must be the right girl for him. Somewhere indeed. <laughs> a girl that can take him from accounting to the vice presidency of this bank. Chief, I think I have the answer. Good girl. <laughs> 
Goodbye. Please, where are you going? Back to Kansas City. They may have some crazy little women there, but no crazy accountants. Oh, come back. Let's talk this over. I, I, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I, I am not going to marry you. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. We have someone else in mind. I mean, I'm sure we can find someone. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Drydale. Ah, oh, Mr. Clampett, come in. I want you to meet a fine young man, Mr. Penn Fredrod. Uh, Fred Penrod. Well, oh, Mr. Clampett here is our biggest depositor. Oh, congratulations, sir. Well, it's no credit to me. My pa was a big man, too. He was taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in addition to being our biggest depositor, Mr. Clampett is also our richest. And he has one of the most beautiful daughters in all of Beverly Hills. <laughs> ah, yes, the fabulous Ellie May. Tell me, Mr. Clampett, is that ravishing daughter of yours married? <laughs> well, now, Mr. Gradiel, I just called you on the telephone. I told you I was looking for somebody to court Ellie May. <laughs> you hear that, Fred Pan? Rod Pan. The Pen Rod. <laughs> now, that name of yours is quite a mouthful. You mind if I just call you Rod? Fred. Oh, I'm Jed. I want you to meet my daughter. Oh, I'm sure that'll be J.K., Fred. Oh, Ellie. I'm Jed. Rod. Fred. <laughs> no, no, hold it. Hold it, everybody. Let's start all over. <laughs> Hey, little pawpaw tree, you're gonna make me rich. <laughs> yes, sir. You're gonna help me dig up old Jed's money he's got buried around here somewhere. Lady Crick! Yeah, I'm back again, Granny. You miss me? No, and I ain't gonna miss you now. <laughs> Ellie May, fetch my shotgun. Oh, no, Granny, is that any way to behave to an old friend that just drove all the way out here from Black Home to bring you that pawpaw tree? That little pawpaw tree for me? Yes, it is, Granny. Why don't you steal it? <laughs> <laughs> you cute little old boss of you. If I didn't have my loving wife, Maury, back to home, I'd come a-courting you. Why, you lazy, good-for-nothing, ornery, low-down, thieving, potent <laughs> Dog, if you don't sweet-talk me better than my Maury. Yes, <laughs> Hey, darling, you must have heard your sweet little old granny wrong. She said to fetch a shovel, so old Leif could go and plant that there pawpaw tree he done brought here. Pawpaw? No wonder granny's jumping for Joe. <laughs> you go fetch that shovel now, honey, and you take this thing away, huh? Ah, you good for nothing, old gully dumper. Oh. <laughs> okay. hey, granny, you sure do know how to make a man feel the hope. <laughs> I sure do appreciate you giving me vittles, Granny. I wouldn't turn a dog away hungry. Soap them pans again. Well, I soaked them three times already. You're gonna take the hide clean off me. Nobody sits at my table unless they're clean. Now wash. Well, anything you say, Granny. I sure wouldn't want to get them so softened up you can't dig a big hole for that pawpaw tree I brung you. Don't worry about that. It's gonna be mighty fine picking them big, sweet, fresh pawpaws right off in the tree like back home, huh? Huh, Granny? Huh? <laughs> you can't get any of them out here now, can you, huh? Let me go have some use. Well, now, then's what I call pucking up clean. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll set the riddles on the table whilst you wash your face. My face? What for? I don't eat with my face. <laughs> you want riddles? Well, I do for a fact, Granny. I'm plumb starved after toting that pawpaw tree all the way out here from back home, just so you can have them big, nice, juicy pawpaws. Then shut that big hole in your face and wash it. <laughs> Anything you say, Granny. <laughs> Ooh-wee, you got more vittles than Luke's general store down the Sibley. Supposing I just help myself, then you won't have to put... Get on the street, Tim! Oh, well, anything you say, Granny. Wow, that ham sure does look good. Granny, Granny. Now, you make yourself a couple of ham sandwiches and I'll be right back. <laughs> Whereabouts you want your pawpaw tree planted, Granny? Anywhere handy to the house where it gets a lot of fun. Well, how about where we filled in your root cellar? No, no. 
You're bound to hit oil. We don't want that messy stuff squirting out of the ground. Wherever you dig, dig shallow. I hadn't figured on doing actual planting. Mr. Crick seemed right anxious to do that himself. No, no. If he digs, he's bound to strike oil. That man fetches nothing but bad luck with him. <laughs> All right, Granny. Well, Skipper and me will plant it. And hurry. The quicker that tree is in the ground, the quicker we'll be shed of that hairy vittle vulture. <gasps> Granny, you'll hurt his feelings. I'm talking about that hairy varmint sitting in the kitchen. The ugly one. <laughs> Let's go, Skip. Make yourself a sandwich, or do you want me to? <laughs> Did you eat all the ham they was? Only the one you give me. You got more. I got more room. <laughs> you got more in you now than a smokehouse. Well, Get out of here. Granny, I need my strength to dig a hole for that pawpaw tree I brung you. Ellie May is done planting the tree. Now get out of here. Ellie May shouldn't do hard work like that. That's for me to do. Now you climb into that puddle jumper of yours and take your worthless carcass back to the mud waller that you come from, you big bullfrog. You keep sweet talking me like that, you're going to make me homesick for Morty. Morty, little skipper. I don't have to ask you who you yell at. I seen Leif's car out front. Where's Ellie? Out back, planting the pawpaw tree that Leif brung us. I'll go tell her to get purried up. There's a fella coming to court. Leif <laughs> Crick brung us a pawpaw tree? Yep. He's giving it to us? Free? Well, I wouldn't exactly say free. It's already cost me a ham, a pound of butter, and a loaf of bread. And my usually sweet disposition. <laughs> Here's a dandy spot, Skipper. Plenty of sun. Wait a minute, Ellie. Now, hold on. Digging in the ground ain't no job for a sweet, pretty millionaire's daughter. You let old Leif do that, huh? Hello there, son. You run along. <laughs> but, but Granny wants me to do it. Oh, now, Ellie, darling. You wouldn't want me to break my word of honor to Morty, would you? I done give her my promise, cross my heart, that I'd plant this here tree. You did? I took a bow on it. <laughs> and it's only fair. She went all the way out in the woods, dug it up, Toted it four miles back to the cabin. Well? Well, now, you and Law help your granny. Well, now, will you look at this? Isn't this a nice spot? It's already been dug up. We won't ruin no grass. Yeah, but Pa wouldn't want you to dig there. Why not, sweetheart? Something buried here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir, and he wants it to stay buried. <laughs> yeah, out of there, Leif. Granny tells me you brung us a pawpaw tree. I did for a fact, did. All the way from back home, just because I knowed it would pleasure you. And, and sweet little granny, too. Told him not to dig there because they was... Never mind, Ellie. Uh, now, uh, why don't you uh, run on in the house and get yourself one of them there, what you call, uh, bubble bath. Get all sweet and pretty smelling because a young city fella coming over to court you. He is? What's his name? His full name is uh, Fred Penrod Pen Penrod, but he answers <laughs> to uh, Fred uh, Rod or... Uh, Jake. Troy's <laughs> well, got a slew of names, ain't he? He's got three names he don't even use. Just the initials, uh, CPA. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Paul? Yeah, I couldn't help picking up a word here and there. Now, surely you ain't fixing to let no city fella come a-court in Ellie May. Not when I got a big, strong, handsome, hard-working, honest, likable, intelligent, unmarried son back home. Is that the one they call Weasel? <laughs> spends most of his time in jail? That's the boy. <laughs> He's out again now, Jed. Turn over new leaf, straightening up his mind. No offense, Leif, but I kind of think Ellie can do better. Let me send for him, Jed. You can see for yourself how he's changed, Dub has. He's a regular city fella now, fit right here in Beverly Hills. I wouldn't waste no bus fare bringing Dub out here if I was you. Well, I won't have to, Jed. I'll get Morty to put him in the shoes. He can walk out. <laughs> Let's forget it, Leaf. Now, if you'll excuse me, Ellie's beau will be here directly. I want to see he gets greeted proper. Well, I'm telling you right now, he won't be the boy my Dub is. Well, thank you, Leaf. That cheers me up considerable. <laughs> Be the young fella coming to court, Ellie May. My twin sister. <laughs> <laughs> twin sister? 
twin sister? <laughs> For young Fred Penn, Rod Penn, Penrod to be getting here. What'd you say his name was? Oh, just call him Fred or Rod. Ellie May, <laughs> get a move on. Say, hey, you and Ellie's bow ought to hit it off real good. Both of you having such a fine education and both of you being partial to ciphering. Is he as good as me? Well, according to the way Mr. Drysdale tells it, uh, he makes his living by ciphering. He's what you call a count. Ellie! <laughs> Please come in, Jed. <laughs> Jethro, if you was a young city fella, wouldn't you just drop right to your knees and ask her to marry you? Yeah. Tell me, you're just about the prettiest thing the Lord ever put together. When that city boy looks at you, his eyes are gonna bug right out of his head. You say that Ellie Mae is bigger than you? Uh, I wouldn't exactly want to say bigger. Just fatter is all. We used to be just alike as two peas in a pod. Ellie Mae took the eat more than I do. <laughs> hey, they sure don't put much candy in these here fancy boxes, do they? Three pounds in that one. Good thing you didn't give it to Ellie. She wouldn't even bother to open it for that little dab of sweet. You, you know, I, I just remembered something. I should... To take my motor scooter in for service, it's it's overdue. Is that a little thing what you ride? Yes, sir. It's it's very economical. You can't take my sister honeymooning on that. Why, she eats sandwiches bigger on this contraption. <laughs> You're right. I'll, I'll come back when I can afford a, a truck. Something bigger. Little city boy, you running out on my sister? Oh, no, 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 sir. Because if you are, you better never show your face around here again. I, I won't. I, I promise. And you pass that word around down there to the bank. Ain't gonna be no trifling with Ellie Mae Clampett. Next young fella comes up here, Corton's gonna marry her. Y yes, sir. All 300 pounds over. Yes, sir. Now you get out of here. Yes, sir. It must be your bow. Come on, Ellie. And don't you come back, boy. You have my word. Howdy there, young fella. This here's my daughter, Ellie Mae. Hi, Fred. Hi. So, so long. <laughs> this girl is Ellie Mae? That's right. Boy, I've... I, I've heard of crash diets, but... This is fantastic. <laughs> is Ellie's bold? Scrawny little feller. Uh, I'd like you to meet Ellie's granny and her cousin Jethro. Folks, uh, this is Mr. CPA Fred Rod. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Penrod. CPA stands for Certified Public Accountant. Oh, we couldn't remember all them names. <laughs> Just call me Fred. Pleased to meet you, Freddy. Uh, glad to meet you, Granny. Howdy, Fred. Hi. Is that there your scooter? Y yes, it is. Can I ride it? Sure. Thank right you. Help yourself. Mm, mm, mm. It pushes hard, but sure do ride smooth. <laughs> Come on in, young fella. Hello. Hello. Is this Luke's general store over to Sibley? Is that you, Luke? Well, this is your old friend, Leif Crick. Now, 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 hold on now, Luke. Don't go hanging on. I'm calling for Jed Clampett. Yeah. He wants you to send my boy, Dub, out to California right away. He is? Since when? Well, can't you get the sheriff to let him out? <laughs> now, you young folks, go right on in the parlor and start getting acquainted. Granny and me will see you later. Yes, sir, Pa. Oh, uh, Mr. Fred, uh, I'd like to have a word with you. Uh, yes, sir. Mm, Skipper, sure do hope you like that nice young fellow that's come to court me. You know, uh, uh, Granny, I reckon you'll be wanting to get the vittles ready. Not especially. Well, do it anyway. Shit, I don't. Now, I'd just like to say that my daughter Ellie ain't been courted much. She's what you might call uh, innocent, uh, sweet and innocent. I understand perfectly, Mr. Clampett. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Hey, Fred, do you like to get hugged real hard? Boy, has your father lost touch with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I sure do like to get hugged real hard. I sure do. Sit down right there and close your eyes. Boy, I'm not gonna miss those crazy little women back in Kansas City one bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good way to get acquainted. Yeah. <laughs> you know something, Ellie? You've got to start using a milder detergent. <laughs> oh, now, Luke, you got to do it for me. I, I mean, for Jed. Yeah, you got to do it for yourself, too. If my boy's dubs married to Jed's girl, Ellie, you're going to get that money I owe you. And it's gonna save me a heap of digging, too. Now, now you tell the sheriff, Jeb Clampett's gonna pay for everything. Sure. All, all you gotta do is get Dub out of jail, clean him up, put shoes on, and send him out of here to marry Ellie Mae. <laughs> Did you hear some noise on the line? I hear you thinking it by me now. Leif Crick must be here. He's Mr. Clavett's nearest and dearest friend. I know. I tried to hire him as a night watchman at the bank, but the poor fellow just couldn't fit it into his busy schedule. <laughs> you and Don about that man. Fantastic. He never stops working. Another Jeb Clavett? That's what he is. Yes. Well, let's see how young Redford's doing. Redford? Rod Groom. Oh, okay. uh, never mind. Let's see how he's doing. <laughs> oh, Mr. Crick, how nice to see you. You. Why, it's that pretty Miss Jane oh. and that young Mr. Drysdale, the handsome banker. I like this man. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for a place to dig a hole to plant a little old pawpaw tree for my nearest and dearest friends, the Clampets. You're always working, this man. Fantastic. Can't you stop just for a while? Oh, no, no, ma'am. I must keep ahead of Granny. Working, that is. I couldn't let no woman outwork me. I'll be seeing you. What a man. Salt of the earth. Fabulous. Well, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale, come in, come in. <laughs> Thank you. Well, how did Ellie like my accountant, young Fernpot? Fred. Frog. I declare that boy's got names he ain't even you. I hope if he marries up with Ellie May, he'll pick out three or four of his favorites and leave the rest go. Apparently, the young accountant has taught Ellie to play the piano. That's a duet. My George, that young Fernpot is talented. <laughs> Who's playing the piano duet? Uh, uh, he is. <laughs> Granny, them was the best company vittles you ever cooked. Absolutely wonderful. What were those delicious little meatballs? I'll give you the receipt when you get married, Miss Jane. Them's my owl burgers, deep fried in possum fat. Husband will never leave home with them on the table. I had a nice big smoked ham, too. But that lazy good-for-nothing Leif Crick ate the whole thing. Granny, I would hardly call Leif Crick lazy. He didn't stop digging long enough to come in and eat. Digging? Leif Crick. Whereabouts? Somewhere out and back, I suppose. Uh, he's planting you a pawpaw tree. Ain't that a kind of a deep hole for that little pawpaw tree? <laughs> I've got to give the roots plenty of room, Jed. Don't dig no deeper. You'll hit oil. Well, I done hit it four times already, Granny, but I plugged the holes good and tight. Jed, I might have me a root cellar after all. Depends on how good he plugged up the oil. That's a lot of pressure to hold back. I think he plugged it up too good. Looky yonder. Oil! <laughs> it's oil. It's a regular curse.
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.